Your favorite athletes, rappers, everyone has jewelry, but how the heck do you make it? Find out now on the show that tackles the most unique gigs you won't find in your job search, Jobs Unlisted. It's crazy to think that the super expensive and shiny jewelry you wear around your fingers or your wrist or even your neck comes from a place that looks like this. A once active gold mine, one of many, from the 1800s gold rush and we're just 45 minutes from downtown LA. But gold only accounts for one of the many materials and ultimately steps it takes in becoming a successful jeweler. And so what better place to start my journey than right here. A step above the jewelers in your local malls are custom jewelers that make bespoke pieces for patrons. Retail prices can range from the hundreds to the hundred thousands for customers of all walks of life. Angel City Jewelers out of LA boasts clients like Post Malone. Thank you Angel City Jewelers for my big rock. Lonzo Ball and countless other entertainers and athletes. Their newest will be Cousin Stiz, whose piece I'll be helping to make. When I have a fresh cut, I feel better. When I have flat clothes on, I feel better. When I'm wearing jewelry, I feel better. What do you think it is about this thing that just makes people feel better about themselves? Jewelry is a way to express yourself. And everybody loves the fact that it costs so much money, so it's much more of a trophy to people. So instead of just going to Zales or some, some mall jewelry store and buying, <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> buying something that everybody's gonna have, I want you to make something that no one's gonna have besides you. When someone sees that piece, they're gonna know it's yours. I know you do things a little differently with your clients. Tell me about where we are and what's going on. All the artists that I work with, all the people that I sell to, have no idea what it takes to make jewelry. They're just used to spending a lot of money on it. But what I wanted to do with Angel City Jewelers is bring people along pretty much on the ride of A to Z, from the entire idea of what you have to once it's done and what it's gonna look like. Um, I assume then the next step is on you. Do you begin drawing or do you begin making a render of some sort? How, what's next? We start the catting process. The catting process is essentially a computer-aided design. It's a rendering of the image. The CAD is gonna give us the blueprint to let us know where we are on the piece. Long story short, the CAD helps budget out the piece, figure out how much it will cost, and what materials are needed. Once that's squared away, it's time to start making the fancy jewelry. Oh yeah, and by the way, I promise this process is not as glamorous as you'd think. A million dollar piece is made in a room that looks just like this. Where are we at now and what's happening in this station over here? What we do over here is the converting of wax and we put this on a casting tree right here. We put this into a, a cement mixture and we take the impression of this and this is what essentially gets turned into gold. Like Isaac said, we make the piece exactly how it will look in wax. Once everything checks out okay, we create a cement mold from that wax and that's the shape the gold will eventually take. We've all heard of 24 karat gold before, which is 100% pure. But because it's too soft to make durable jewelry with, it's essentially watered down with a bunch of other stuff. So what are you adding in there right now? It's alloy with the silver. Alloy and silver? Yes. Got it. How much money is this worth right here? Like $1,875. $1,875. To see how gritty this process is, this $1,875 worth of gold is sitting in a fruit cup. This once had probably peaches inside, and now it has literal gold. Now that the 24 karat gold is mixed with the other metals, it's time to melt it all down into one. Yeah. I'm excited for this. This tiny little bitty piece of gold that... You're looking at about 40, 50 bucks right there. For that little tiny little shit. Pure gold right there. So I pour the gold. Copy all right. Also, gold melts at 1,948 degrees Fahrenheit. So if you're wondering why I'm so scared, it's because I don't have on any gloves. I see sparks. light the fire. Oh, this shit broke. Fuck. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Stop playing with me. Light work. Once it's melted, we pour the liquid gold into the mold we made earlier and let it cool and harden. How long does this need to sit? 10 minutes. 10 minutes? 
we dip it in water. Oh, and our gold piece is complete. Now we just rinse it off. And we're good to go. There you go. How modern would you say this process is? Because I'd envisioned that they would already have like robots and machines that can do all of this. Awesome. Nah, this is, this is how they make jewelry. There's no expedited way. So even though this is a little prehistoric, it's been the same method since the do dawn you, of time. Do you think that there will ever be a time where a human being is not doing this? I don't think any robot will have the eye that a human will have yeah, and the right. touch. I hope not. This is, Shit, that's scary. It, it's not like a parking lot attendant. Right. You know what right, I mean? Right, right. What we do here has a lot of feel, mm -hmm. and that's something that you can't program into a computer chip. That's something that, as he does, it takes 20 years of time. Basically, this guy's irreplaceable. Yeah. That's a wrap for day one, and day two is the part that gets everyone excited. The reason everyone's here, the diamonds. Later, I'll be presenting the piece to the client, but before that, I've got some work to do. It's time to put the ice in the piece. Isaac, tell me about who Omar is. Who is this guy? Omar essentially is the guy that makes everything nice and pretty. He's my setter. He takes everything from what you saw yesterday, the casting, and he puts all the diamonds in it. Right after he puts all the diamonds in it, he polishes it up and gets it ready for the client. So he's essentially the last step in the entire jewelry making process. Right now, we're gonna put this uh, letter that we wanna work on it right now. This piece is gonna soon be long to Cousin Stiz, and there's nothing in it right now. Nah, it's actually really dull. It just came out of casting, so there's no life in the metal. But you're about to see what He's I'm about to put I'm some a, life into this right yeah. Let's see it, let's see it. So how many stones are about to go in there? 306 stones. Between these three bags, 306 diamonds. How much are these bags worth right here? $3,000, $3,500 for this tiny ass bag. Talk to me about how a diamond is even made. They're naturally occurring in the earth and coal mines. They're pretty much built over a lot of time and pressure. How many of these diamonds are cubic zirconia? Zero. None? None. <laughs> I hear rappers all the time talk about VVS. VVS is pretty much no inclusions at 20 magnification. So if you zoom in, 20 times, there will be no imperfections. It'll be very hard to see any imperfections. I hear it all the time, even I say it, um, but when people talk about bust down, like a watch is bust down, what does that mean? Fully iced out, least amount of gold visible. Almost nothing visible, just completely covered in diamonds. Now I take your place and you took mine. Yes, sir. There we oh. go. Here. All right, so here we go. All right. Pretty much you did it. I think I just did it. Do you want to yeah. look at it? Yeah, you did it. See that? The diamond is there. It took me a week to do that. <laughs> First off, I'm, I'm good with the flame. You know what I'm no, saying? No, you now? weren't good with the flame. You After. made up for it today with this, <laughs> right. I made up for it. You made up for it today. So that probably took me like a minute or two to do one diamond. Do you six have 306. Right it will take me about three and a half to five hours to finish that whole piece. Within a couple of hours, the piece will be done and ready for delivering to Stiz. I've set some diamonds. Omar is going to add the finishing touches, and it's on to present the finished piece to Cousin Stiz. So have you gotten other pieces from him before? No, this is my first one. I'm not really into the jewelry like that, you feel me? I try to keep my shit clean, low key, so. Subtle? Mm -hmm. this well, is my this first one, one is not all the way low key. This is a bit <laughs> uh, bust down, to say the least. Yeah. You bought it, so all you right, can go man, ahead. Let me see this, bro. Man, hold on. Suspense. Man, yo. Ooh. It looks great. Oh, yeah, it's just hard. Let's bro. get some flash on it just so we can see them diamonds dancing a little bit. Thank I'm you, happy bro. you trust him and you indirectly Appreciate trusted you, me. Nah, nah, I trusted you to fuck with my boy, bro. It's well, right. one and one, bro. Hell yeah. Isaac, my man, I appreciate you so much teaching me everything there is to know about this jewelry shit from casting to m melting gold to molding to presenting. A lot of people don't get to see what goes behind the scenes and to be able to stand here in front of some cameras and tell people what I do for a living and how I get to come to work every day and love what I do. I'm blessed. 
Over the last couple of days, I've learned what it takes to be a jeweler, and I can honestly say it definitely is not what I anticipated. Now, some pros of the job, it's a true craft, and there's an opportunity to make a lot of money. A con of the job, though, is that it's a profession, like many others, filled with dishonest people that can try to get over on you. All in all, this is a job that I would do as soon as I get over the whole lighting the fire thing.